Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. Man, I'm glad that you joined us today. We have Dr. Dave Rethorst here from Kansas State University. And we're going to talk about what to do with those open cows and, and cows that are on pregnant. It's bound to be a great show. Dr. Dave's always a great guest to have on the show. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you here in a minute. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, Dan. Good to have you here, Dr. Dave. Folks, this is Dr. Dave Rethorst, and he is a faculty member at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where he works at the Beef Cattle Institute, and he is the director of, of outreach and has had a little bit of experience on pregnancy testing cows and, and sleeving cows in his, how many years? 35 years. 35 years of bovine practice. So somebody that has a lot of experience, has a lot of practical field experience, and we're going to talk about pregnancy. So let's just start out with it, uh, Dave. Uh, you know, why, why do we preg check? Well, Dan, you got to go back and remember that marketing of our cull cows can account for 15, sometimes 20 percent of the cash income for a cow herd in a year's time. So we need to make sure that we get those cows identified early and get them marketed where they produce the most income for the ranch. You bet. And so does the earlier detection or later detection, you know, what, what are some of the reasons or, or economics behind getting that earlier detection? Well, hi historically, our, our cull cow market is good in September and October. And then when everybody starts weaning, you know, the October, November, December, when the corn picking's done and everything else, we get a, a glut of cull cows on the market and, and the bottom drops out of the market. So if we can get the cows identified early and get them marketed before we hit that November, December time frame, we're better off as far as, as cash income. How early, you know, we, we put the bulls in in the summer and, and we take the bulls out or we AI, how, how soon are you talking about? What's early diagnosis? Well, you know, in heifers particularly, we can go down to, with the use of ultrasound, we can go down to 30 days after we pull the bull out and detect those pregnancies, which is great on the yearling heifers because then we can get them marketed and get them into a feedlot and we can still have carcasses that will grade along with the steers right. because so, they're young enough. Yep, yeah, so, so that's something important on the heifers, just putting them in the normal cattle feeding situation and off we go right. if, they're, if they're not bred. If they're not bred. Uh, you know, if a person doesn't have ultrasound, you know, typically we can start 35, 40 days after the bull's out, uh, you know, 60 fits a lot of people's time schedule. So waiting a couple months and, and, and doing that. Right. Well, it's a great start to the show, great topic, one that's pretty timely, one that you have a lot of experience with, and one I'm sure a lot of our viewers do as well. We're going to come back with Dr. Dave Rethorst after the break, talk a little bit more about what you do with those open cows. You're watching Doc Talk. See you in a minute.
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Dr. Robert W. Sprowls, resident director of Texas A&M's Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory, was recently honored with the Texas A&M AgriLife Vice Chancellor's Award in Excellence for services, specifically diagnostic services. Working with both large and small cattle operations, Dr. Sprouls brings his skills as a diagnostician, pathologist, and leader to a complex role. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Dave Rethorst from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're having a great discussion this morning uh, about open cows and what to do with them. But let's let's get to let's talk a little bit about why they happen. Well, several reasons most common reason would be nutrition, that the cows aren't in good enough shape going into breeding season. Uh, you know, we need to have these cows in a five to five and a half condition score going into breeding season. And, and if we drop below that at the beginning of breeding season, you can just, looking back at records, that if you have a four, there's just about 5% more of those open then if they're a five, it just goes right on down the line. So, so getting good cover, and, and I think it's important to know that the cover and the fat, you know, helps drive normal physiology. Right. And, and whether, regardless of the species, so having them in that good condition score, drought situations, not weaning the calves on time, different things to that nature right. can all play a all, role. All play a role. Okay, so there's some management. Age of the cow have anything to do with it? Age of the cow will have something to do with it. Historically, our two-year-old cows that are just weaning their, their first calf are our biggest problem on getting them bred back just because they're young, they're still growing, trying to get enough nutrition in them where they'll milk for that calf and breed back is tough to do. If we can get those bred back, we'll have a little bit of a fallout as three-year-olds and, but then when we get start getting into that nine and ten year old cow, our pregnancy rates start dropping off again. Sure, and and uh, you know and and then the one that we probably, you know, the, the first two are management and understanding that those heifers are still growing even though they have a calf and 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 that we've got to get the right amount of groceries in them. But but then this last one, disease, biosecurity. What are some of the diseases that, that you vaccinate for or you think about when you think about open cows? Well, you know, historically everybody vaccinates for Vibrio and Lepto. Right. Uh, in 35 years of practice, I never diagnosed a case of Vibrio. So I really question sometimes if we need to, although it's an accepted practice, so that's fine. But I think more important than, than the Vibrio is 
BVD. BVD can cause open cows. It can cause weak calves and, uh, and persistently infected calves causes sick calves in the feed yard. So BVD is important. The other big one that I never thought I'd see in the state of Kansas when I graduated from veterinary school was trichomoniasis and we thought it was a mountain disease, a cooperative grazing situation disease, but the last few years we've seen it in Kansas and Nebraska, and I've seen eight herds in, in the last four years. But it's a biosecurity issue. You need to watch what you're doing. Excellent. Well, aside from all those, making sure your bull's... Making uh, sure the bull's <laughs> fertile. <laughs> That's right. Folks, it's a great discussion. We've talked about when to preg. We've talked about what causes some of these open cows. When we come back, we'll talk about the disposition and things that you can do on marketing these open cows. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high risk cattle or treating BRD. I'm Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. And for today's tip, we're gonna be talking about needle selection. It's very important that we think about that when we get ready to vaccinate cattle. We only want to use 5 8 or 3 quarter inch needles on sub-Q shots and inch or inch and a half needles on intermuscular shots. We want to go sub-Q as often as we can. And so again, we'll use the 5 8 inch needles and 3 8 inch needles with a, with a preference for the 5 8 needle. Uh, 16 gauge, even 18 gauge if we need to. Uh, on smaller calves, we can go 18 gauge. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batril 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batril 100, right the first time. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Your cattle are often at risk of respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. But MPB Guard vaccine can help prevent those problems early. MPB Guard delivers proven efficacy against Mycoplasma bovis, even on young calves just 45 days old. It also gives you the convenience of an initial two-dose sub-Q vaccination series. So help guard your cattle from costly respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. Just ask your veterinarian about MPB Guard vaccine. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm joined here by my friend and colleague at the Beef Cattle Institute, Dr. Dave Rethorst, who is a private practitioner in South Central Nebraska for 35 years. He practices in Kansas and Nebraska currently and we're tickled to death to have him on the show. And Good we're talking about a topic, 20% of the revenue of our cow-calf operations. Cow-calf operations, 15 to 20%. Come from cull cows. Come from cull cows. So we've got to get it done right. Yep, so how we market those cows can be important. Right, all right. And, and as we talked on earlier, getting the yearling heifer preg checked early, getting them in the feedlot, we're maximizing the income off of that heifer by doing that. Uh, if we can get the cows preg checked early uh, and get them on that September, October market, that's still a pretty decent market. Uh, we're in good shape as far as dollars per pound of cow. Now, if we get into November, December, that mm -hmm. we talked about how the bottom falls out of that market because of the glut of cows on the market. And, and a lot of people will delay marketing those cows they identify in November and December until we get into January, February, which is typically the highest 
time of the year as far as cull cow market. The thing we've got to watch there is that, you know, if, if those cows are in a five and a half to six condition score in November, December, my philosophy is you ought to go ahead and market them in November, December because they aren't going to get any better condition score than that. So let's, we're going to end up with more net dollars that way than if we hold them till January or February and they lose 100 pounds, we might get more per hundred weight, but we're getting less total dollars. So we need to take a good look at well, that. Well, and those cows that have the more body condition on them are not going to be as efficient if you put them on grain or something like that. Right. They're, they're going to feed it at a nine or 10 feet efficiency versus these thinner cows that'll come in and feed at a five, six, maybe right. a six. Right. Um, but it goes back, if you're going to feed cows before you sell them, they need to be thin cows and you get the most efficient gain. Yep. And, and part of the reason why people feed cows is that white fat market. Right. And, and what we mean by white fat is cows that have been on grass have more of a yellow tint from the beta carotene in the fat. And when we put them on a grain diet, it bleaches that fat or turns it to white. Right. So, um, you know, other options, well, corn prices probably play a little role in this too. $8 corn and a beef, uh, cold cows. Not, not a good deal. <laughs> 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 but uh, corn, unfortunately, fortunate for the cattle feeder, unfortunate for the corn producer, we're going to see a reverse in that. Right, right. We are, we are seeing that, and I think it's probably going to go lower from what I've been reading. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think that, that understanding your, your uh, corn price, understanding your input costs, understanding what you potentially could gain, in an animal that's already in good body condition score versus one that's thin, all things and factors you need to roll in to, to before you're going to delay marketing and put them in that white fat market. Right. Run a pencil on it, do a partial budget, figure out what's best, get you the most net dollars. Great. When we come back, we'll wrap up on cold cows and selling open cows with Dr. Dave Rethels. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Today we're going to talk about taking care of your syringe and cleaning it after you get done. First thing you want to do is take the syringe and clean the outside with warm soapy water, get all the manure and, and different things off of the syringe. Then you're going to take the syringe apart to clean the inside. On the inside of the syringe, never use soap. Only use warm water to rinse that inside of the syringe out. We're going to let the syringe dry, and after it dries, we want to put it in a dust-free environment. One of the best places, put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in your freezer. But before you use the syringe for the next time, make sure that you allow that syringe to warm up to room temperature. That's today's BQA tip of the day. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. 
our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hello, friends. I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows. We talk about horse health. We talk to top trainers. And we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow, calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dave Rethorst. We both work at the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University. We've been talking about what to do with those open cows. And, and we've talked about when to preg, which cows and heifers are gonna be more of the trouble uh, we've talked about some of the reasons why we have animals that are open, and then we've talked about marketing those cold cows or open cows. And you know, in this day and age of animal welfare practices and and hidden cameras, and and let's throw all that aside. Let's talk about doing the right thing. And and I always talk to people about if you're going to market an animal, it should be something you'd be proud enough to put your picture on there with him or her on the front page of the paper. Yep on the front page of the paper or if it was something you'd feed your own family. Yep, great comparisons. If, if you're not going to feed it to your own kids, why sell it to somebody else to feed to their kids? Yep. You know, we, we want to make sure that these cows are in good condition score. We need, my personal thoughts, we need a minimum of a three, three and a half. I'd prefer a four as a minimum going to market. Uh, for body condition score? For body condition score. Absolutely. You know, and, and some of these animals, first of all, they got to be able to walk. Right. You can't ship a non-ambulatory animal. Right. Well, it's against the law to ship a non-ambulatory animal. Absolutely. And and let's not ship the ones that, that you know, if you think they're going to go down on the truck. Right. I've worked enough sale barn work that, you know, some of these cows come in to go through and they're so thin you can't even get them through the chute. So if you try to tag them, they go down and... and you end up dragging them out of the chute and, and euthanizing those animals. And you just as well do that on the ranch rather than bring them to town. Yeah, and we have to remember that what we do in a public setting, that we put the auction markets in a terrible situation when we bring those animals that aren't of quality. We put them in a, in a, in a pretty precarious situation and, and we understand that they are, they are a great tool for marketing cattle in this country. Right. But they're not a lymph node for for weak and disabled right. cattle. Those animals either need to be treated and recovered or euthanized. Or euthanized on the ranch. And and you know the even even ones that can make it through, you know, like the the cancer eyes or some of these clinical yonis cows or things like that, you know, that just shouldn't be in the food chain. Well, they wind up being condemned when they get to slaughter. Right. So why put the animal or the people through it? Right. Most people, we got to remember, are doing the right thing. We're just talking about educating and, and moving the industry and improving. We've got to get a little bit better every day, as Coach Schneider says. You and Coach Schneider got that right. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk today. Dr. Dave, thanks for being with us. It's Good to be here.
great to have you on the show. Great show, great information. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. And if you want to know more about what we do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. You've been watching Doc Talk. I'm certainly glad that you joined us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vetmedica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust.